so welcome back to another video lecture and here we discuss about this plastic analysis and then yesterday already we have seen about those analysis related with this plastic analysis and what's the difference between this plastic analysis and elastic theories well, for this analysis we are going to consider the stress strain graph of the mild steel itself and in our previous studies we already go through the analysis up to the elastic actually actually we are not moving on to this plastic theory okay we are only in the safer side or otherwise we will say safer side if any analysis or any design we only go through this working stress equal to this yield stress by factor of safety okay so now we move on to another stage that is the plastic region or plastic analysis actually for that we will consider a case that uh, that in this case a simply supported beam is given and a load is acting and we already know that at a certain point if you apply a load of magnitude 3 kN let us apply a magnitude of 3 kN and it can uh, absorb it can obviously uh, possess up to this magnitude of allowable stress fa and after some loads let us take an example 10 kN is acting we increase the load to some limit and it will reach an yield stress value the extreme fiber portions and after that that is the case up to this elastic region and actually in the case of a material it has again tendon means it can again we can deform that material actually for that we are again going to apply some more loads that is 20 kN let us take an example 20 kN and this case if you observe in this diagram this extreme fibers is extends to some more stresses it can actually hold down some more stresses and uh, again we added some more losses and it is going to be 50 kN in this case we will get this final or the extreme fibers to be equal the stress value to be same throughout the cases okay so starting from this to this that is a transformation of plastic analysis and at a stage it will going to be collapsed so such a stage there will be a moment is developed that is called the plastic moment okay that is called the plastic moment and at that point the hinge it is called as plastic hinge actually okay so plastic hinge if further load is applied there will be no more moment carrying capacity and the structure will start to rotate so that is the point called the plastic hinge and what's the difference between actual hinge and the plastic hinge in the case of actual hinge the moment it is going to be zero and the case of plastic hinge the value it is going to be there will be some magnitude for this plastic moment moment at any point when all the members have yielded okay so that is the plastic moment actually in the stage if you are uh, applying certain losses okay increasing the load values and at some certain points the all the members going to be yielded yielded means stressed or deformed deformed to some extent so such a stage a moment developed it is or in the plastic region actually it is going to be developed such moments are called these plastic moments then plastic hinge represents is a section at which all the fiber sealed and hence for any further load rotation takes place okay so at a stage there is some stage will reach the me member is going to be collapsed such a stages this plastics uh, or rotation will happen okay rotation for that particular member will occur and that's uh, that point it is called is plastic hinge now we move on to the next term that is called the shape factor that is so already you know that this relation this m by i equal to sigma by y equal to e by r that is the simple bending theory equation or simple bending equation from this equation you can write down this way that is actually this sigma also represents stress and sigma and f represents the stress value so you can write down in this way that is m equals f multiplied by i by y you can represent this as section modulus you already studied those terms in the mechanics of solids and f represents the bending stress and m represents bending moment and if you write down in this way that is defining the moment causing the extreme fibers to yield as yield moment okay so you can write down that value as m y equals 
f y z y this equation you can write down in this way isn't it that is that means the case at which the extreme fibers of a beam the extreme fibers of a beam okay this actually this diagram represents that stage the extreme fibers of the beam got some values f y at this point so that value can be represented in this way that is f y multiplied by z y z y represents the section modulus value and now we are discussing this plastic moment so you have to write down in this way that is plastic moment equal to f y the yield stress value that is going to be z y but this z p is changing okay okay this z y here for this e moment causing extreme fibers to yield yield moment and this plastic moment carrying capacity it is going to be z p that is plastic section modulus hence we can define shape factor as the ratio of plastic moment carrying capacity to the yield moment carrying capacity that is the definition for the shape factor this term is very very important this shape factor definition then uh, regarding this how to calculate the shape factor for various cases rectangular triangular likewise then i sections different cases you have to study that also very important and if you write down in this way that's the ratio of plastic moment carrying capacity to the yield moment carrying capacity this plastic region actually this plastic moment carrying capacity to the yield moment carrying capacity m y so mp by m y you will you can write down as f y by z p and finally you can write down as s equals z p by z y and here you can note down that this z y it is going to be i by y and z p it is going to be a by 2 multiplied by y1 plus y2 okay these terms we'll discuss later what is this a like actually a means area and y1 this uh, distance from the neutral axis the centroid to the centroid then the value of shape factor is always greater than unity since the plastic carrying moment is more than yield moment okay so always the plastic moment value will be or plastic moment value is greater than yield moment that's a, that's why the shape factor value is always greater than one then coming to the cases the shape factor for various sections now we will discuss the rectangular section so here you can observe that a rectangular beam is given with the dimensions b by d okay b by d dimension is provided and if you draw the stress uh, strain diagram or this value it is going to be in this way isn't it if you apply in the elastic region the value it is or the diagram it will be in this way so so if you consider the plastic case or plastic moment cases the value it is going to be the diagram already we discussed the diagram will be in this format so the compression will be above this neutral axis or plastic neutral axis actually this value it is called a plastic neutral axis and the distance from this neutral axis to this uh, point that is called y1 and from this it is called y2 then you can write down this values as that is i by y okay that i represents bd square by 12 moment of inertia for rectangular that is bd square by 12 and y it is going to be the half half the value of that d that is d by 2 you will get b d square by 6 then coming to calculate the z p a1 represents the area under compression and a2 represents area under tension actually this region this is a2 and this region a1 so you need to calculate those values and uh, we know that moment equal to force into perpendicular distance and this moment it is going to be force into this perpendicular distance that is c into y1 plus t into tension into y2 then force equal to actually what is that force force equal to stress into straight area stress equal to that is sigma equal to f by a stress equal to force by area so force equal to stress into area so you can write down in this way c that is compressive force f y into a1 and a tension equal to f y into a2 mp equals f y multiplied by a1 y1 plus a2 y2 that that means you are going to substitute this c value with this and this tension value with this one 
and you get this equation and then you know that a1 equal to a2 equal to a by 2 actually isn't it in the case of rectangle this if you take the case of rectangle it is going to be half the portions a, a by 2 actually here also a by 2 so if you take down those values outside it you can write down in this way uh, that is a by 2 outside then y1 plus y2 then area equal to b into d by 2 then y1 actually what is going to be y1 if you consider this diagram this y1 it, it actually means this half of that value that is up to here it is going to be d by 2 isn't it and if you take the half again it is going to be d by 4 similarly y2 also d by 4 value so if you write down finally you will get or if you substitute this shape factor you will get this value that is 1.5 that is substituting this mp and mpi value you will get this equation that is 1.5 value so that's the case so now moving on to the next section that is a circular section so in this case also the same format we are going to follow so the area upper portion is going to be a1 and here a2 and this center of gravity points are also marked here and this is the case of this diagram and we already know this values that is mp by my that is equations for calculating this is why this moment of inertia value it is going to be pi d raised to 4 by 64 that's the moment of inertia for circular section and if you take this y d by 2 then it is going to be pi d q by 32 then coming to calculate the zp zp value then the area under compression and the a2 represents area under tension region okay then in this case also it is going to be a by 2 both the regions are half equally divided actually and you can write down this uh, force mp plastic moment equal to compressive force multiplied by this perpendicular distance plus tension force multiplied by y2 then calculate those values c and t and if you substitute you will get this area you are going to take this a1 and a2 is a1 equal to a2 equal to a by 2 actually so you are going to take the uh, a outside and you can write down in this way actually the same procedure followed in the rectangular section here also we are going to follow so pi by 4 d square by 2 then this y1 represents actually this value is very important that is 4 r by 3 pi actually this distance from the center to this point actually this point it is going to be 4 r by 3 pi okay so here you will substitute the radius instead of this radius you will substitute d by 2 and if you substitute you will get the equation in this way d cube by 6 multiplied by f y and if you substitute those values in shape factor you will get 1.69 so that's the case of circular section okay so these derivations are very very important then coming to the triangular section if you take the case of triangular section you can observe that let us take the height bh and up to this neutral axis if you take this height bh1 and the center of gravity points is g1 and here below it is g2 and this distance it is going to be this width distance it is going to be one and the bottom it is going to be b so in this case also we will follow this x equal to zp by zy and zy you can write down as i divided by y max that's very important so if you take the values that is i for this triangular section you know bhq by 36 that's also very important bhq by 36 and this y max you are going to take from this for this whole body if you consider this for this whole body this y max it is going to be 2 by 3rd h okay from this top position if you take this y max it is going to be 2 by 3rd h so if you write down it is going to be bh square by 24 then to calculate this zp to find out this zp value so that's our next step okay so for finding out this zp value you are going to consider this triangular into isosceles triangles or you can consider that is h by h1 equal to b1 by b so if you apply these conditions you can easily 
come to a conclusion that h b1 equal to b multiplied by h1 by h that's the statement then area under compression if you observe if you take this region this above this region that is half multiplied by b1 then h1 that's the area of this uh, area above this neutral axis actually so you can write down half multiplied by b1 h1 and if you substitute this value of b1 here you will get a1 equals half b h1 square by h so that's your equation number one then if you observe actually this area is means this neutral axis parcel such that this area will be equal actually this total area is going to be divided by 2 a1 equals a2 equals a by 2 so if you substitute those values that is a actually for total area if you observe half multiplied by b into h for this triangle so if you equate this this values is actually if you equate this equation 1 and 2 you will get h1 equals h by root 2 okay h1 equals h1 h by root 2 and b1 equals b by root 2 so that's the case so after that this y1 value you have to calculate those y1 value for finding out this y1 value actually this y1 it is going to be from here actually this value you need to calculate this y1 value so if you take from there you will get 1 by third of h1 so if you substitute those value you will get 0.2357 h okay then similarly you have to calculate the centroidal distance of trapezium from the top so the general equation it is going to be h by 3 multiplied by a plus 2b by a plus b that is a represents so if this is your triangle uh, trapezoidal portion if you observe here so this is your trapezoidal the bottom portion so this will be a and this will be b okay that's the statement so if you consider such a statement you can write down those this height represents that vertical distance actually okay this vertical distance that is h actually represents so in this case this h value it is going to be h minus h1 h1 by 3 okay this is 3 actually so h minus h1 represents this height then multiplied by this a represents this b1 and uh, the bottom it is actually b in this case so you can write down in this way substitute for this b1 also the values corresponding values if you substitute and you will get the, this value and after that zp we already know a by 2 multiplied by y1 plus y2 this is the general equation actually this a by 2 multiplied by y1 plus y2 so if you substitute those values is this y1 and y2 you will get this value that is 0 0.0976 bh square after that you can directly substitute those values and finally you can come to a point uh, the shape factor for triangular section as 2.343 so that's the case of shape factor for triangle section so similarly you can calculate more figures like uh, i sections with the symmetrical i sections t sections okay so shape factor for such structures we will discuss in the next class so with this we will wind up today's section thank you